Thanks very much, Fergus. I think that I'm the person really who ought to be expressing gratitude this evening because Fergus and all of you have made me so welcome when I came back to the ministry here. And I, I'm, I'm really pleased about that. I really am. I wonder, could we just have a prayer just before I speak this evening, please? I'm normally on different topics every time that I come up to speak here, but there's one thing that never changes, and that is my need for the grace of God and the Spirit of God at this moment. So I wonder if in just a moment of silence now, we could just welcome God to breathe the life of his Spirit into the words I'm going to speak, and also into me, and into you, that you may have a listening ear to hear what the Lord wants to say to you here this evening. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit to come now, please. Lord, your Holy Spirit is the most powerful force in the whole world. Thank you that we have an opportunity to welcome that force, to touch the words that we're going to hear now, so that you can change them, Lord, make them your own, and speak a personal word to each one of us here this evening. Lord, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm taking part of a classic reading in the Ministry of Healing here this evening from James 5, starting, uh, starting at verse 14. That's James 5, starting at verse 14. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Over the last uh, 10 or 12 years, I have been taking notes on significant things that have happened in my life. It may be something that somebody says to me in a personal conversation. It may be something that Fergus says at the introduction to this healing service on a Thursday night. It may be a word on a sermon when I come here uh, to St. Patrick's on a Sunday. Maybe something just uh, that I read in a book but if it's significant enough for the living of the Christian life, and especially if I could possibly use it as a sermon illustration in days to come, then I take a note of it. I've been doing that for 10 or 12 years, and I discovered there recently I've almost 200 pages filled with notes. And I decided actually that I'd go back over them again. And some of them were absolutely superb. It might only have been a one-line quotation, but honestly, it was just so significant. But for purposes of this sermon, uh, in a healing service, I was particularly attracted by something that was written by Archbishop Gregg. He was the Church of Ireland Archbishop of Armagh in the early part of the 20th century. And he was a man who was way ahead of his time. You know, that was a time whenever very few people in the institutional churches knew anything about the healing ministry and even fewer were actually involved, but not Archbishop Gregg. He believed implicitly that the Jesus who healed people when he walked this earth, that he still heals people today, and that it's not enough for the church just to help people to feel better within themselves, great and all, as that gift is. He says the church should actually be healing people. Now, that was 1932 that he wrote that. I'm telling you, he was a man ahead of his time. Let me just read what he wrote in that article. The Christian church has, in fact, abdicated its ministry in respect of sickness. It visits hospitals and condoles with sufferers and encourages them to endure patiently and learn the lesson of their pains. But where do we find Christ taking this attitude or his apostles? Christ healed. The apostles healed. And when they could not, as in the case of the demoniac boy, he rebuked them for their unbelief. And Archbishop Gray goes on, I am compelled to hold that with all the evidence that is being gathered in the present day, 
It is the church's business no longer to rest in the conclusion that it is God's will that his children should be burdened with disease and pain, but that they should examine the question anew and find out for themselves in the days of this generation whether the powers of spiritual healing are not just as truly available for members of the Christian church today as they were for the Jews when Jesus walked in Palestine. Fantastic. The man at the very top of the church there saying that he believes that the Jesus who healed 2,000 years ago, that he heals today. Not enough for the church, actually, just to help people to feel better, not to help people to find peace when they're disturbed. That is a fantastic gift. But he said, we've got to go beyond that. The church has to actually be healing people. And do you know what Brother Jardine says to that? Brother Jardine says, amen, because scriptures tell us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if you look through the Gospels and look through the miracle stories, one of the things you'll find that if Jesus healed this man this way, he probably healed that man in a completely different way. The number of different ways in the pages of the Gospels that Jesus healed people was absolutely legion. And it's exactly the same today. He heals in many different ways. He seems to give each individual the personal treatment, the right tablet that they need at that time. I have only time to give you three examples of how he healed. And the first one actually is to do with prayer and fasting. You know, I was always keen on sport. And um, ever since I was a boy, I played team sport right through until I was 30 years of age whenever I went and joined the Society of St. Francis. And then I went into a completely new lifestyle and I didn't have an opportunity actually to carry on playing sport, but I kept on training and I used to go to the gym as well. But in 1976, actually, I got uh, an ankle injury, which was quite serious. It needed an operation. But the problem was that every time that I tried to get back to training again, it was okay for a little time. Might have been for a few weeks, might have been actually eaten for a few months, but then it broke down again. And that went on, believe it or not, brothers and sisters, that went on for seven full years. And then I started to do something that was very significant. I'd been reading spiritual books on the power of prayer and fasting. And I decided to give it a go. And I started to pray and fast twice a week. I was working on Crumlin Road Prison at the time. Didn't fast for a very long time, but I worked late two evenings. And I used that as an opportunity to fast from lunchtime one day until breakfast time the day the next day. The important thing in fasting, incidentally, is not the length of time that you fast. The important thing is your intention. Is it unto God? Is it for the glory of God? And I was trying to do it in that spirit, and I was praying for five particular topics in my own life, and one of them was the ankle. Now, I'd only been fasting for a short period, but I was over in the Queen's Gym one day, and I ran into a fellow, Davy Seaton, who later organized the Belfast Marathon every year for years. And Davy had been a long distance runner for a long time, and I'm sure he had encountered a few injuries himself. And I told him about the problem that I was having with the ankle, and Davy knew exactly what I had to do. He told me about ice treatment. That was something I didn't know very much about way back in 1983. But he told me about ice treatment. He took the time to explain to me how to make the ice, how to apply it, and then to do gentle stretching exercises up against the wall. Brothers and sisters, it was revolutionary. Inside a short time, I was able to start running again. I didn't want to break down again. So I decided to run for very short periods at the start, two to three minutes at the start, then four to five minutes, six to seven minutes, and gradually built it up as slowly as that. After six months, I was able to run five miles every time I went out. I never had a problem with that ankle again. I was running until I was 67 or 68 years of age. I was an old man. There weren't too many people around the city of Belfast running at that particular age. But even if I had broken down again, 
The Lord had showed me a way to deal with it, and that was through ice treatment. Brothers and sisters, healing through prayer and fasting. You know, I didn't want to tell that story there this evening. Maybe some of you have even heard me tell it before. And I knew that I had told it before. And I told it on a number of occasions, so I didn't want to repeat myself. But the Lord insisted. You ever get a wee sense that you want to do something different from what he wants to do, but you know in your spirit that what you want is wrong? And that's the way it was with me on this occasion. I knew I had to tell that story. And I think that the reason is that the Lord has sent to somebody here, or maybe to more than one person, I want you to get back into fasting again. Or if you have never been in it before, I want you to think of starting it up. So will you take that seriously? And maybe before you leave this evening, if you're the person or you're the people whom the Lord has spoken to through that illustration, maybe you'd just come and tell me. You see, whenever we fast, we're actually saying, Lord, you're so important to me that I'm even prepared to go without food, to spend time with you, and to get to know you better. That's what we're saying to the Lord. And you see, whenever we show the Lord that we're serious, when we show the Lord that we're serious about needing his help and wanting his help, then he can respond in a very powerful way. Healing through prayer and fasting. And now healing through prayer and the laying on of hands. What is it that we do whenever we pray with you with the laying on of hands? There's a sense in which it's different from prayer in the background, although we hope that the end result will always be the same. But what we're really doing is, and that's what will happen when the prayer ministry team pray for you this evening, and I hope you'll all go to get a prayer incidentally, we bring you to Jesus and ask him to heal you. And we believe in the ministry of healing, that when we pray with the laying on of hands, we believe that the power of God is released in a very powerful way. You know, I was part of a team that went from Divine Healing Ministries in 1996 to the city of Katsina in northern Nigeria. You may never have heard of that city, but I'll tell you, it's a big one. It was a city of a million people. Eric Lewis, a long-standing member of the team, a founder member of the team of Divine Healing Ministries, uh, indeed. Eric was part of that team as well. And he and I were to go out on the Sunday morning, the first Sunday that we were there, and to preach. But on Saturday, both of us took sick, and we were vomiting quite badly. And the bishop took us down to see a doctor, and the electricity had failed in that area. And this doctor was sitting there by the light of a candle. But I'll tell you, even if his methods had to be a little bit uh, primitive on that occasion, this man knew his stuff. And I knew the way he was talking to me and asking me questions, that he knew exactly what was wrong. And then eventually he said to me, he said, you have the symptoms of malaria, but it couldn't be malaria because you're not in the country long enough to have received them. And then I think he gave us some medication actually to deal with the complaint that we had. But next morning we were still both unwell. So we weren't able to go, even go out to the services, let alone preach. But what we decided to do was that every half hour, Eric would pray with me with the laying on of hands for five minutes. And I would pray with Eric for five minutes uh, with the laying on of hands every half hour. Before very long, we both began to feel an awful lot better. And by the time it came to lunchtime, we were completely well. And we went out and preached that afternoon in St. Andrew's Anglican Cathedral in Katsina. And we had such a freedom, you would never have believed we were both so unwell just a very short time before. Healing through prayer and fasting. Healing through prayer and the laying on of hands. Incidentally, as I mentioned prayer and the laying on of hands, I felt the Lord said to me over there that if you're a couple here this evening, you know, and so, or if you have a friend who lives close by and you, you, you take ill, there's something wrong. Uh, you could do that, what Eric and I did for one another. Uh, it doesn't have to be every half hour, but could you do it every day. I, I taught a prison, another prison chaplain one time who got cancer. I taught him and his wife to pray in that way. And uh, they, they prayed that way in the morning. They prayed that way in the evening. And even when he eventually got the all clear from cancer, he said to me, my wife Kathleen and I, 
those times of prayer in the morning and the evening with the laying on of hands are still very precious to us. So healing through prayer and fasting, healing through prayer and the laying on of hands, and then finally, healing through pleading with the Lord for healing. Did you ever notice, brothers and sisters, when you look through the Psalms, the number of occasions when the psalmist is desperate and he's crying out to the Lord to come and rescue him. Sometimes it's evil people who are making life difficult for him, but it could be anything. And whatever the problem, he's crying out, pleading with the Lord to come and to set him free. And this is often in the Psalms and in my personal experience, a very effective way to pray. Psalm 34, this poor man called and the Lord heard him and rescued him out of all his troubles. You see, what we're doing when we cry out to the Lord, we're showing him again, just like fasting, we're showing him that we're serious about needing his help and about wanting his help. And somehow or other, the Lord seems to respond from that heartfelt cry that we pour out to him. In 2005, I had to go to St. Luke's Hospital for the clergy in London to get a hernia operation. I was surrounded by an amazing amount of prayer when I left here to go over to London. And the operation went very well. They kept me in the hospital for three days. You wouldn't get kept for three days, I don't think, today uh, after a hernia operation. But they kept me for three days, and I was glad of that. And then for another 10 days, I stayed with the Society of St. Francis in one of their houses in East London, under the shadow of West Ham football ground. And then I was ready to head home. But unfortunately, nobody could take me to the airport. And I had to carry my own bag, which for a man in health would have been no problem. But for a man who had had a hernia operation, it was a big problem. And next morning when I woke up in Belfast, I knew I'd done myself damage. I don't know whether it was that or whether it was the effects of the anesthetic. But a couple of weeks later, when I was recovering in my own home one night, I was just uncomfortable. I was in pain throughout my whole body. And I couldn't get myself into a position where I was actually feeling comfortable. I walked and it didn't take the pain away. I sat down and it didn't take the pain away. Eventually, in despair, I headed up the bed and I lay down and I said, this'll do it didn't make the slightest bit of difference. And I was lying there trying to get asleep and I couldn't get asleep. And then I sat up and I said, Lord, I don't believe this. One of your servants, someone who has given their life totally to you, someone who has committed themselves to live for the rest of their lives under vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. He's sick, he's in pain, he's hurting here, and you aren't doing anything to help. Lord, will you please come and help me and take this pain away? Inside five minutes, I was over asleep. I slept the whole night through, woke up the next morning. The pain had gone completely, and it never came back again. Brothers and sisters, pleading with the Lord. You ever tried pleading with the Lord? Maybe you've tried everything else. But pleading with the Lord is a very effective way to pray. I've been saying here this evening that 2,000 years ago, Jesus healed in many different ways. He gave everybody personal attention, the exact treatment. He knew the exact treatment to give to every person. It's exactly the same today. He heals in many ways. There might be a few more sermons on this theme, by the way, but tonight I've only time to deal with three ways of receiving prayer. Healing through prayer and fasting, healing through prayer and the laying on of hands, and healing through pleading with the Lord to bring healing. Let's just close our eyes for a moment, please. We all prayed together, and I have no doubt we prayed in unity. We prayed that the Lord would send his Holy Spirit, that he would touch these words and he would speak to each person here, we can trust him to have done that. But let's just be quiet. Give him a chance to speak again. I've heard the word fasting come up 
in a number of different quarters and situations recently. And I feel that maybe the Lord really is saying that to a lot of us here this evening. It's the most powerful spiritual combination that we have. I think we maybe need to remember if we're taking medication, we probably won't be able to fast, but not all of us are doing that. So if that's a word from the Lord for you, then just take it on board this evening. But now we have an opportunity to pray for one another. Uh, Maybe you've come here this evening because you're concerned about somebody else or about some other people. So I'm going to be quiet actually just for maybe a minute or so and just allow you to bring them before the Lord and even just to pray for a moment for them. Just do that now, please. Lord, we were thinking this evening about the theme, God heals in many ways. But I think if Archbishop Greg was here, he would first of all want to emphasize, God heals today. God heals today. So Lord, I just pray that that word, that affirmation, will give confidence to everybody who has come here to receive prayer either for themselves or for somebody else, and that they'll come forward to receive prayer on the team as well in confidence that your healing spirit, your healing Holy Spirit, is going to move in this place this evening. In Jesus' name. Amen.